morning, everybody, and welcome back, or welcome to the channel if this is your first time. This week's video and this entire morning's video is going to be completely on how to shoot a sunrise. I know that sounds kind of basic, but honestly, if you're new to photography, it's something that I wish that I had looked up and I knew when I first started out photography. If you are new here, hello, my name is Elias. I am an amateur landscape photographer. I'm based out of the Pacific Northwest. I like to explore my local area and travel outside to other areas and bring my experience as a new landscape photographer to YouTube. If that kind of content interests you, hit the subscribe button. I do put a video out every single week about this kind of stuff. And please help me get to a thousand subs. I'm trying to get to 1000 subs in the year of 2023. So please help me out and hit the subscribe button. Currently I am in central Oregon. I am in the Ben Redmond area. Last week's video and this video where you're at Smith Rock State Park, it really, really cool place. If you're going to Oregon, you haven't been there, I highly recommend going, especially either at sunrise or sunset and you'll see what sunrise is gonna be like today. The reason for this video is because I have been recently seeing all my Instagram memories pop up, especially when I started out in photography. And a lot of those were early mornings going to shoot sunrise and I just thought, what the hell was I doing? Oh my God. So I wanted to bring an on location experience of what sunrise means, what shooting sunrise means, and the best information I can give you to best guide you in shooting sunrise. So the very first thing I can give you is showing up early. I recommend being wherever you want, being on location at least 45 minutes to an hour early, at least. I'm already breaking that rule. <laughs> Woke up late, I got like no sleep last night. These are all excuses, but I'm already breaking that rule. In showing up early though for sunrise means it's obviously going to be dark. So make sure you bring proper gear, proper headlamp, your proper clothing that you need for whatever weather you're gonna be traveling in. This morning it's about 30 degrees, so it's gonna be pretty cold, but the hike up there is pretty steep, so I'm gonna get really warm so I have both hiking clothes, and then once we get up there, I have warmer clothes to put on to do the sunrise shoot. So we are running out of time. It is about an hour till sunrise, so let's get going. sucked. Woo! Made that in record timing. That's what happens when you're not early. You're compensating and you're pushing your luck against time. You don't need this anymore. So I'm up top. I can already feel how cold and windy it is. So I've made a plan to invest in actual wool. Just haven't gotten around to it yet. But now I'm going to quickly put on a bunch of layers. So yeah, be early. Be early because I would have loved to have been here probably 15 minutes ago. All right, let's talk about this. So when I first started photography, I thought, okay, everyone shoots at sunrise. I need to shoot sunrise too. Not really thinking about why, I just knew that everyone shot at sunrise, everyone shot at sunset. That's what I need to shoot. Being ignorant in that and making me learn the hard way instead of researching why people did those things, was, let me just say, I would have saved a lot of time if I wished to look it up. So why do we shoot at sunrise and sunset? Light. Landscape photography is all about light. How the light affects the landscape. You can take a picture at any point in the day. Tell me truly which one you're gonna like more. You're gonna like the one with golden hour or you're gonna like the one with overcast and dull tones. I mean, it's pretty obvious that light really sets the tone, really changes the photo when it comes to landscape photography. At sunrise, you have three different time zones. You have twilight, which is when you can kind of start seeing shapes and forms. You kind of see shadows of things, maybe a little bit of light. You see you see where the light's gonna be coming from as the sun gets closer to the horizon. I wanna call that about an hour, hour 15 before sunrise. Then you have what's called blue hour. I don't know why it's called blue hour, maybe because it's catchier, because we have golden hour, but blue hour is more like blue 25, 30 minute period. And right now it is in fact blue hour. We have about 15, 20 minutes before sunrise. And that is honestly one of my favorite times to shoot landscape photography because you get these cool tones, very cool. And when I mean cool, I mean very warm and cool on the temperature scale. You get very cool tones in all of the landscape and it gives it this 
of unique vibe that you don't get at any other point in the day. But it's also contrasted by the warm tones from where the sun is coming up closer to the horizon. It's a very, very cool time to shoot. Then you have what's called golden hour. Golden hour is after that sun pops up over the horizon, <sighs> lights up everything like Lion King status. I don't know why, why I said Lion King status. Maybe because like I'm thinking like Simba on top of the rock. I don't know. Nonetheless, it lights up and it creates all of this golden side light, warm tones, direct opposite from blue hour. You went from cool, cold temperature tones straight to these warm tones, and it's a really unique time to shoot. Versus you shooting at noon when the sun is overhead and the light is harsh and everything just looks way too gnarly to shoot. It just hurts your eyes, the highlights are blown out, it's hard. Same thing goes for sunset, only in the opposite order. You got golden hour, blue hour, twilight, and then astro photography, which is one of my favorites. We're talking about sunrise though, and that is the reason why we shoot sunrise. So let's talk about weather real quick, because that greatly affects what your sunrise is gonna look like. Obviously you can't shoot a sunrise if there's no sun. So tracking to see where the clouds are, if there's gonna be a pocket in the horizon as the sun comes up, to give it that space to hit the side light on whatever you're trying to shoot, or maybe you're trying to shoot in the horizon. The way I look at it is I look at cloud coverage of my area and I kind of go out 50 to 75 miles and I see if there's clouds, and I see how high those clouds are. Today we have very pastel high clouds. These clouds are about 15 to 18,000 feet high, which is perfect, except over the horizon, it gets a little bit more dense, which means the sun's gonna come up and it's going to be hitting these clouds, which is gonna block some of that sunlight, giving us very soft light. Nonetheless, a good rule of thumb is if it's sunny, you're gonna have sunlight. If it's cloudy, make sure you know your cloud coverage and what areas before shooting because you want that sun poking through those clouds. And if you're really lucky and you can time it right, you might have some clouds on the horizon like this that might actually catch a lot of color. See, clouds hold color. They might look dull and gray during the day, during sunrise and sunset, you've seen it, they hold that color and at different altitudes and the way the sun hits it gives it different colors. Anywhere from yellowish to orangish colors to that bright pink and red fiery burn that you've probably seen and just stopped in awe. That is the golden ticket of sunrise. Right now the sun is coming up and it's kind of hitting these clouds and catching some color. So this is what I wanted to talk about really quick where you're shooting sunrise. When I first started photography, I thought I had to shoot directly into the sun. I have so many photos of me doing the same thing over and over again, shooting directly where the sun is, trying to get that cloud flare, trying to get anything. I thought shooting sunrise literally meant shooting, watching the sun rise over the horizon, when in fact, there's so much more you can use to it. There's so much more. But that is a way you can use sunrise, is shooting directly into the sun. So I'm gonna throw on the big lens and let's go ahead and get a photo because there is great color, great color in those clouds.
I first started landscape photography, I certainly was not doing this. So we have now entered golden hour. The sun is up over the horizon. It is casting light on everything and it looks so good. It gives it that golden hour light. That, that is what sunrise is really all about. Getting that golden hour, lovely warm tones light. And like I said, when I first started photography, I did not care about that when the sun came up i left huge mistake huge mistake because you get so many different compositions with the light hitting it such different contrast in ways you won't get at any other part of the day so prime example of this we have the rock in the background lit up it's got beautiful golden light on it and then we have our subjects right here in the foreground which is still in shadows and that contrast between it and the rock in the background is such a cool image. It creates depth and it gives it so much more than if you were to take this at flat light, at direct sunlight, at any other time of the day. Stuff like this is where it really, really matters. So when you're doing sunrise photography, experiment, try different things, try side light. Don't be in such a hurry to catch Oh, the sunlight rising. Oh, I gotta get the side light. Oh, I need to get all this golden light. Let's just try to experiment and focus on one thing because I promise you being rushed will kill, will destroy your photography. Take your time, experiment, get that side light. <laughs> Awesome, that was an incredible sunrise. That was, I think I picked a pretty good day and area to do this video, so I'm really stoked about it. It is now well past golden hour. Now, normally the light would be getting super harsh, but these clouds are giving it that block that give off that dull, soft light, if you will. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and head back down. But before I do, I wanna give my final thoughts on sunrise photography and why so many of us enjoy it. Solidarity, having that peaceful, moment to yourself in an area that's incredible experiencing something that not a lot of people get to experience because let's face it it's hard it's hard to wake up early it's hard to hike through the dark it's hard to get the motivation sometimes to get out of bed to go see this kind of stuff and experience it for yourself and i don't know about you but us backpackers and hikers and photographers like to have those moments to ourselves as much as possible and it also gives you an inclination on how important it is because you're here you're the one experiencing this and they're not and it's their loss which is why i love doing youtube because i love bringing these experiences to youtube these kind of experiences and these kind of landscapes and times i get to see and go out through the day are phenomenal i think they're next level they do something for me that nothing else does so solidarity having this moment to yourself that is the greatest prize that sunrise photography can bring to you and with that i'm gonna end it here guys i'm gonna just keep it a nice short video if you saw last week's video you know that this place is extremely really popular there are so many people there's going to be so many people here today but i didn't see a single person this entire time i had this whole experience this whole area to myself and that's awesome especially for a place as popular as this but yeah we're just going to keep this video nice and short just wanted to give my thoughts on sunrise photography and what that means and how you can do it as a new photographer because like i said going back and watching all the cringe from when i started i wish i did more research and i wish i knew how biggest thing guys is just get out and do it experiment there is no such thing as too much experience experience only makes you better and i'm not saying that i'm a professional i i always say i'm an amateur landscape photographer i still have a lot to learn basics of sunrise photography is something i had to struggle through and i just wanted to share that with you so maybe you don't have to thank you so much for watching guys that's going to do it for this video if you like this video if you got any value if you learned something you took any of this information and it taught you something 
please hit the like button. It does help my channel out tremendously. Again, you could probably see I don't have many subscribers. I'm still very new to YouTube. So any help and all the help I can get means the absolute world to me. Please hit the like button if you could. Hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to make it to a thousand subscribers this year. 2023 is the year of a thousand subscribers. So please help me get there and hit that subscribe button. I put a video out every single week. That's gonna be it for today, guys. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna go back down. I'm gonna go meet up with my fiance and my dog. I'm gonna go enjoy Bend, Oregon. And we're gonna come back here later tonight. And we're gonna be doing our save the date um, engagement photos. So yeah, I'm stoked on that. Don't know where we're gonna be next, guys, but subscribe and stay tuned and I'll see you guys next week. So later, guys.